one that can influence how we make decisions. One neuroscience explanation I love mentioning is the biz-baz theory. This comes from Gray uh, around 1977. And these have to go with our behavioral activation and our behavioral inhibition systems. So imagine you get an all expense paid trip to a tropical island of your choice. Are you happy about it or are you upset about it? Now, if this was a few years ago and not during a global pandemic, perhaps what you're thinking is, oh, I get to go to the beach, I get to surf, I get to drink cool things, there's buffets every day, all food isn't paid for, I get to meet really fascinating people, I'm gonna go on some sightseeing tours, I'm gonna soak up the sun, I'm gonna relax. Maybe the sound of vacation is very fun. And maybe the sound of vacation is very fun, but then there's this other voice in your head that says, I have to get my travel vaccines, I have to get my passport checked, I'm gonna to have to make sure I get health insurance, I have to make sure that I get all the right types of bug spray and all the right types of sunscreen. I don't want to get food poisoning, so I better sanitize my hands the whole time. What if I get robbed? What if I get lost? What if I don't make my connection on the airplane? Have you ever been doing something really fun? And although part of your brain is really excited, another part of your brain is really nervous about what could go wrong. Well, this shows that you have an active baz and an active biz. So let's talk about the biz baz. Baz is our drive to approach good things in life. It's called our behavioral activation system, and it represents activity in the pleasure circuit of our brain. People that have more activity in the pleasure circuit of our brain, they tend to be motivated and make choices based on what they could possibly win or gain from. This is the idea that they are hardwired to think about what could go right in life and all the cool stuff that could happen. People that are exceptionally high in baths might be the more reckless and impulsive people that don't really have that filter. So they're very sensation seeking and very outgoing. Versus the biz is our behavioral inhibition system. This represents activity in our fear or panic circuit in our brain. And this really drives us to want to avoid the negative outcomes in life or avoid danger, avoid things that could cause harm. So it's the idea that we're cautious all the time. We don't want to break a limb. We don't want to get bitten by a bug. We don't want to end up in a circumstance that's really unfortunate. So people that have more active biz have more activity in their fear and panic circuits, and they're more hardwired to try and avoid what could go wrong in life. You might have very active baz and biz, which means you might be driven towards lots of good things, but at the same time driven away from the bad things, or you might have moderate or low in both or any possible combination. But either way, your biz and your baz can really influence your decisions. Will you go on the trip or will you not? Can you think about the good things that could happen or are you preoccupied with all the dangers that might come? And the last little bit about decision-making I wanna talk about is the role of inhibition. This is the idea that we have to quiet parts of our brain that want to fire all the time. We can see this in infants. We can take little cards that have a picture of a moon or a picture of a sun on them. And we can ask toddlers, be trained to say day when they see a moon and night when they see a sun. And if we do this enough, we shuffle up a deck of cards and it's they don't know what's going to come next and they say moon, day, sun, night, moon, moon, day, day, they can do it. But they feel a bit tired afterwards. And that's because this is hard cognitive work. In order to shut your brain down from saying night when you see moon or day when you see sun, you have to inhibit your synapses. You have to inhibit those action potentials and shut it down. This is related to impulse control, controlling your impulses. It's also considered a higher cognitive task called executive function. It's the idea that you can control and take executive control over your brain. And this, you can almost feel some kind of heat in your head sometimes because your brain has to constantly shut down all these neurons from firing. A very popular task in testing this inhibition is called the Stroop task or the Stroop effect. Uh, and this is when we're presented with the English version of colors spelled out, but the font which spells those words is not the color that matches. So if we see the word red spelled in blue font, or we see the word orange spelled in green font, what can happen in kids who are literate or in teens or adults, their part of the brain wants to say the color but then another part of the brain wants to read the word. And those two things want to do the opposite at once. And one of them has to be inhibited. It's a really fun task to try out. And I encourage you to try out this Stroop task and see if you can almost feel the, the heat or the friction or the tension in your brain when you play.